My name is Mark Karski, I love you guys. Give it up for Mark Karski, making it look easy. What's up guys, episode uh, 95 of The Comedian, set number 96. It's uh, Josephine's Martini Bar. Every Tuesday I host it with my homies. Uh, starts at eight, podcast at seven beforehand. So that's what we're gonna, I'm heading there a little bit early today. We're gonna film two podcasts for the Who Are We podcast. Um, if I'm not hosting today, I'll go last and I'll be talking about like my Jewish side of my family, how they gave somebody a gift card to charity, like one of the little kids a gift card to charity. I was gonna just give him resentment. How he's gonna shoot up a school, talk about my cousin who's a murderer, and then probably end up with, finish with talking about red flags and trying out the beep 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 thing. Uh, again, if you know what I'm talking about. But I'm driving <laughs> and I really gotta get there, I'm a little late, so uh, it's gonna go good. It's always a good time, good hang. Uh, I miss going there. It's been like a week so far. I didn't go last week because I was sick. So, all right. Love you guys. Hopefully, I don't bomb at my own mic. Are you guys ready for your final comic of the evening? Yes. Yeah. Hell yeah. Let's give it up for the man on the couch, Mark Karski. They're all like, geez, finally, dude. Thank you. That's a good crowd. They're like, fucking finally. This is finally over. So, uh, these Jews are, are weird. Uh, let's go. Half my family's Jewish. Again, okay, like, uh, I'm not talking like cheap, I'm talking like yarmulke. <laughs> <laughs> Real Jews. <laughs> they, uh, did you guys know that the Jews have penis cutting parties? <laughs> like literally they, they will cut a dick and the cake and invite people. <laughs> uh, apparently, I learned this at an open mic, it's called a bris. Okay, which sounds like cheese. I thought there was gonna be a, a charcuterie board. <laughs> Turns out it's just dick cheese. It's <laughs> <laughs> They wouldn't even let me watch, dude. I was there just hearing this kid crying. I'm like, why am I even here? If I can't see the spectacle, you know? So if anybody has a brisk coming up, I would like to see <laughs> the penis getting cut. Uh, these Jews are super fucking weird, man. They gave one of my cousins a gift card to charity, so he had to use the gift card on his uh, favorite charity. Did you guys know kids had favorite charities? I didn't think. I think they're trying to teach him like the value of a dollar. I was like, that's gonna teach him resentment, I think. <laughs> you might as well just like buy him an AR-15 at this point. <laughs> I think my cousin's gonna shoot up the school, dude. I think it's gonna happen. It would make sense. It's in our blood, dude. One of my cousins killed four chicks, four women. Not a cool guy. Not a cool thing to do. But he is getting the death penalty, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, I want to go watch as like a family member, you know what I'm saying? Like I want to vlog the death penalty. I want to put it like the title would be like my cousin's death penalty in parentheses. I'll put like emotional, you know, so, <laughs> so people know how they should feel. <laughs> but do you guys? I kind of agree with him like a little bit. Like some people should die. You guys don't, do you guys not agree with that? That's fine. Woo! I'll change your mind. Okay, one guy. We'll kill some people together. Uh, this one chick. She was like, "Yo, when I was 16 years old, I could not believe that the Earth made." Mount Rushmore. <laughs> the place with the faces, she thought it was naturally occurring in nature. I was like, that would be a pretty easy way of picking the president. Just like, he might as well. <laughs> He's on the mountain, you know? Uh, <clears throat> I would kill her, no problem, honestly. Uh, but obviously, walking red flag right here. I just said I would murder a woman, and I'm videotaping it, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at red flags. Like, I would still fuck Amber Heard. Like, I would. In my mind, I'm like, she's probably changed. She's probably different from that. She's different now. But uh, I don't know if these are red flags. I was going out with a chick, and she was like, uh, her, she fucking loved Rainforest Cafe. That was her favorite thing. Is that a red flag at 29? Like, what is it? The ambiance? It rains every 30 minutes. It's not, it's not a good time. She's 29 years old. Uh, she lived in America, and she was coming to visit. She's like, is Illinois inside of Chicago? Is that a red flag? Uh, she was hot enough to where I was like, no, I see where you're coming from with that. I can see, I see what you're saying. And uh, lastly, she wanted me to uh, wipe cum on her face so that the airport would know that she's a little slut. And I was like, hey, you're gonna tell them? They don't scan for cum at the airport. It'd be funny if they did, though. Yeah, <laughs> just like beep, 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 beep,
We did wee oo wee oo. <laughs> abort, abort. I didn't want a wipe come on her face, man. But I did. I did do it. I did it. I actually didn't even think twice about it. Uh, and it wasn't cute like Simba. It was like war paint, dude. It was gross. Like she was going into battle with Braveheart. It was disgusting. So thick. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> shooting big loads here, guys. And uh, the, I had the thought at the same time. I was like, wow, you would be a terrible mother. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, guys, that's the open mic. My name is Mark Harsky. I love you. Yo, what's cracking, guys? Episode 95 of The Comedian, set number 96. Whoa, I just got like some nasal. Feels like I have some fucking allergies going on right now. Oh, no. That sucks. My nasal passageways, I've never blown my nose before. Literally. <laughs> and this might be why. I, maybe that's why I'm having this problem. That's a fact, actually. Look it up. Ask my mom. I've never blown my nose. When I was a kid, I just never wanted that pressure, you know? I just felt, I thought that was weird. It felt like my head was going to explode. That's not what this is about <laughs> at all. My bad. It's the Adderall. Um, it's about the set you just watched, Me at Josephine's Martini Bar. Uh, it's the uh, mic I host with uh, me, AJ Lydig, Dylan Mahler, Danny Hamill, and Dad McCarty. Uh, we do a mic uh, a podcast before the mic called the Who Are We podcast. Uh, that's on this channel. That's with AJ Lydig and Dylan Mahler. It's great. The three of us is just super great um like different personalities they intermix super well and stuff like that and i think it's going super well it's uh just like the star powers there and like just our different personalities just mix the puzzle comes complete we're all like super different but also super talented i want to get a i want to book zanies because they have booked zanies so i want us all three to have zanies under the belt that'd be pretty cool but uh like this is the set i'm working on that I post, like that I'm gonna be sending, I'm not sending this clip out, I'm sending out the one, I did something like this set on Sunday, so this was Tuesday. Yeah, so the, the episode before this one, I think I did a similar set, but it went way better because there was like 60 people in the crowd compared to six at this one, I was the last one up. I always go last at our mic, um, usually I'm the one on the audio controlling the music and shit like that, and I have a hot mic so I can like chime in if, if need be. Um, so I'm just working on like getting through the the reps and remembering it. Like I'm I'm doing a super good job with remembering. That hasn't been a problem yet so far. Uh, I really like the the cum scanning thing, and I like the the wee you wee you thing for that bit from B Wee. Shout out Brennan. Uh, Brennan Weaver is hilarious. Um, he didn't even remember that he gave me that tag. I told him it worked. And he's like, I don't even remember. He's like, you should have just done it in front of me, until I just stopped laughing at it and then tell me. Uh, so I'm going to keep that bit in for sure. I'm going to be working on this tonight again. At I'm going to be at the Comedy Vault in Batavia. Um, I was talking to Dylan Mahler. He's a, one of the best in the scene for sure. And he's going to be huge. Guaranteed, dude. It's going to happen. I promise. So um, he said, like, I asked him, I was like, do you, th like, is it, because I feel like I've said this before, that when you say heinous shit or like crazy shit, dark shit on stage, you kind of have to start off lower and build up to the heinous shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, my cousin's gonna shoot up a school, my cousin is a murderer, uh, some joke about hitting women, or whatever. Um, but I think, because I, I say in this, I go, you might as well buy him an AR-15, but there might be, there might, might I'm gonna keep all of that in there, me just stumbling up my words, because I don't want to edit. Um, something in between the AR-15, between it and I'm thinking of saying like when I go um I think that's going to teach him resentment and instead of saying you might as well buy him an AR15 I'm going to just be like describing how like re like resentment in a white dude has never turned out good for schools you might as well just buy him the AR15 we'll see how that goes uh the comedy vault is usually um how do I put this not a mixed crowd it's usually just white people and it's usually a good crowd what i what i mean by that is like middle-aged white people is different than like at lol was um like there was actually literally every race but asian there <laughs> uh there's like a lot of black people and younger people and uh that's like a that's really like my kind of audience type of shit that's what i really like um because they're a little bit more interactive as well and like they seem to not care as much when uh, i talk about like my cousin who's a murderer like my uh, like when I do that like middle aged white women are like, but like uh, some black people and stuff like this isn't generalizing. This is just something I've noticed. 
that like they don't pull back when I talk about my cousin being a murderer. They'll usually be like, come on. <laughs> Hell yeah. Like they don't because my theory is they've actually they know what bad stuff is. And a lot of white people are just like, it's just they're fake in it. It's like virtue signaling. N not everybody, right? You see what I'm saying? But like, do you understand what I'm saying? It's just something I've noticed on stage where um, I wouldn't be thinking this if it wasn't true. Like, um, I haven't done like um, like a full, like a, like a black room. That sounds like you shouldn't say it nowadays. But to my knowledge, that is still the vernacular used. Um what would, I don't know what you would call it in this PC culture, whatever, what mixed, but it's not right. Uh, so like a black room, like I haven't done one of those yet. Um, but there are like clubs where like, that's literally it's just like everybody in the audience is black, which is not a problem to me. That's a literally a bonus. Like that's going to be a super fun time. Like to me, if they're like, Hey man, they're all going to be 30 to 45 years old and white. I'm going to be like, oh. I'm going to have to explain pegging, huh? All right, they're gonna hate. They're gonna hate me. They they're gonna hate me the second I walk out on stage. All right, they're gonna just judge. <laughs> probably, I actually don't even factor in how I look into the set. Even though like I wear suits sometimes and shit. Not like this time. I was in my my cozy gear because I was working. You know. Uh, but like Dylan was asking if he should like add more colors to his stuff and stuff like that. And I was like, nah, don't just be like dress you, be you. That's what I'm doing. Right. Like I'm just dressing up how I want to. But. In the beginning, people told me to like dress down, but that's inauthentic. I'm just gonna dress myself. I do dress myself, but dress how I want to dress. Um, but I never really factor that in, like what people think. Hmm, that'd be interesting. Cause like, I don't really, like everybody judges, like everybody judges a book by its cover. If you say you don't, like I can say I don't, but like you do, but you can dismiss the judgment, right? Cause you just know you don't know that person, but you can, you're like, it's still coming in. Like, that's why we have eyes. Um, what am I even talking about right now? The set went good. There wasn't that many people there. I'm just all over the board right now. Uh, but it went good. I mean, there wasn't like tons of laughs. There were parts where there was a little bit of lulls, but I didn't let it like stop me or slow me down. I just went into the next sentence as if I, cause you can kind of tell like when you're shooting a basketball, this isn't my analogy, but when you're shooting a basketball and it rolls off the finger, like when it leaves, like, you know, if it's going in or not, or, or you're lying to yourself, right? Uh, with a joke, like right when you're finished, like you're saying it, the last words are coming out, like the follow through. You're like, ah, this is getting no laughs. Ah, oh, knew it. Okay. So you could just go into the next sentence instead of like doing the laugh pause break that you would naturally get. Maybe there's like a little hint you get from like people who are getting the joke beforehand or, or not. Maybe, maybe that doesn't happen. I need to like watch more. That's just the theory I had right there. But now like, um, yeah, I just got to keep running through the set just to get that down. You know, I've been adding the switching the red flags and switching the with like my friend telling me he sucked dick during a game of Uno uh, and how he wants to get pegged and all that stuff. Like that's the other five minutes that I'm working on so I can put together 10 minutes set. This is how it's made. Literally, <laughs> like this is a you have to review as a comedian. If anybody's trying to start or if you're just curious, um, what you do is you write jokes. If you very first, you go for the first time on stage, you write jokes, they're terrible. You keep going on stage saying them until they get less terrible. Keep the stuff that gets the laughs. Add more terrible stuff. Keep the little parts of the good stuff that you get from like the terrible shit you came up with. Out of all the five minutes of bad stuff, you're going to get 30 seconds of good. Add that 30 seconds, find another 30 seconds. Get the five minutes put together. And then I think you have to work on another separate five and add them together kind of last minute like i'll kind of might have to like practice it really in my head uh because like the vixen closed down i wasn't going to go there anymore but you don't get 10 minute spots anywhere some places are four but it's good to keep you on your toes like at lol i was, was expecting five but my homie came up who was uh hosting he's like we're gonna have to give you four because they have to close it down soon if that's cool i'm like totally like totally cool i'll just in my head look at it like a math problem and subtract what i think will work but I think it's going good. Having a great time doing it. Everything's going as planned. I'm going to be sending out the clip to get booked soon. Hopefully just got to get those emails of people and like find the right people to like talk to and, and even send that email to. But, uh, thank you guys so much for watching and listening everywhere. It means the fucking world to me. Um, if you want to support this comedic journey further, uh, patreon.com slash wine poppy is the best way to directly support because YouTube is actually demonetizing these videos, which has surprised me since I've been doing YouTube for like 
five years. Yeah. I didn't think these would get demonetized, but they are. Like my main channel, which is my main job, gets demonetized as well. So to fight back against YouTube and to support Patreon, uh, we also have like merch at wineboxpoppy.com. My main channel is Wineboxpoppy. Box Poppy. I just talk shit about reality television. I'm about to film one right now. It's a good time. Uh, but if you can or don't want to, I totally understand. Just like, comment, share, subscribe. Let's keep that algorithm going, baby. I love you. Mwah.